Hey, happy Monday to everyone. I am Paul Apollonia, and uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself. Well, first of all, we're, this is the video where I'm going to go over what I sold on eBay. Uh, going to probably have about six or seven items this time. It was a good week, but a lot of it was redundant sales that I've done so many times before. I'm trying to keep this video short for you guys. So back to me, I'm Paul Apollonia. I've been selling on eBay since about 2001. Took it seriously around 2007. Took it more seriously around 2010. Uh, started doing a lot of consignment for friends of mine and got into parting out items because I, I did small engine repair on the side back then and had another business. And now I do parting out of items, uh, dishwashers, whatever. I can get my hands on appliances, lawnmowers, you name it. And I do tons of assign uh, consignment. Consignment is about 60% of my business. I love it. It is not for everybody. Let me first start off with we had a wonderful event Saturday and Sunday, uh, the September 14th and 15th here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, Worth Point sponsored, uh, Worth Point and eBay sponsored a uh, seminar on Saturday from 9 to 4. It was wonderful. Dana Crawford, Will from uh, Worth Point, and Brian Burke was here in Raleigh, and it was just great. Everybody loved it. It went much better than I expected. I thought I was going to have some hiccups, but everything went smooth. Thank you to all the people that said they were going to help out, and they actually showed up. I really appreciate it. Then Sunday, we went on a treasure hunt down at the uh, big flea market down at the uh, fairgrounds in Raleigh. That was great. Uh, Dana was uh, on ball. She was the uh, biggest uh, treasure hunt ever. I think we had 16 people there. So we were helping her out, trying to group out people and stuff. But it was wonderful. Thank you to everybody that showed up and participated. We are planning on doing another one for next year around this time. All right, let's get this show on the road. So we are going to do, uh, let me make sure I get the dates right, from September 9th to uh, September 15th, 2019. Sorry, a little tired from the weekend. All right, so this is my YouTube channel. Please subscribe to it if you'd like. I'm constantly doing videos like this, what I sold for the week. Let me make this bigger so you can even see more of my ugly mug. Um I forgot to turn my eBay light on. Oops, over there, wherever it's at. It's over there. <laughs> I'll have to, it doesn't matter. You can see it. Um, been doing it for about a year on YouTube. Really, really love it. Give a lot of uh, advice on parting out items and stuff like that. Um, just always trying to put videos up that are uh, good and to the point and that you guys can learn from. All right, let's get started here. First item was a consignment item. A bunch of bo matchbox cars a friend of mine's a father had he passed away unfortunately his father and he gave them to me to consign some of them go for big bucks some of them don't you just gotta just i just get them out there whatever i get for him i get for him he's okay with it it's a 50 50 split uh anything uh, actually i'm changing my uh, my rates around a little bit so it's basically a 50 50 split up to a thousand dollars and there's a whole bunch of other things i'm changing but um so here we go. Uh, we sold it for thirty-three dollars, uh, four bucks to sh four or five bucks, I think, to ship it first class with insurance. They got it without a problem. Went out to California somewhere. Uh, did not have a box. I stated it does not have a box. I'm very descriptive in my title. You always have to be descriptive so people know what they're getting. Uh, how I work these is I look them up. Uh, I Google it. I find one on eBay. I also Google it, and I get as much information as I can about the vehicle. Always state if there's no box, there's no box. If the box has damage, state their box has damage. And I always, I'll go over one listing of what I do, so we're not, uh, I don't want to be redundant here, because I purposely don't have a whole lot of items on here to make this go faster for you guys. Um, so like I said, the title is uh, pretty descriptive, exactly what I'm selling. Don't worry about grammar or punctuation or anything like that. Um, condition description, I always use that if it's used, and I basically move all this, the title, and this down into the description when it's time, and I'll show you that when we roll down there. Uh, item specifics are very, very, very important for eBay and Google. eBay loves them, and Google loves them. When you're picking your item specifics, and you, you, you'll see a pull-down menu or bar, whatever they call it, when you're picking them, 
always try and pick one that's already in the pull down menu because um, it means millions of people have searched on that already. You know, you can put your own in there. That's fine. But try and keep it to what's out there already. I, um, I think I added my own in here. I can't remember. Does it say something about no box? It says autographed. Yes, it's not autographed. Oops. <laughs> Oops. But it's okay. He's happy with it. Um, I always uh, put uh, a little item notes here, like somewhere on the truck and lettering, just so people know. It's very old. Um, let's go over. Oh, and then here's the, um, the description. Like I said, very simple, very clean. I just found out I was wrong. It's not 80%. It's about 65% of all sales are touched with a mobile device. That means that someone looked up, like, for example, if someone can look up on their mobile and go back to their desktop, and eBay keeps track of that, and they know a mobile device touched that device somewhere along the way. So 65% of people. So it's really important to have these descriptions real short, clear to the point because people got those well they're big screens now but they're tiny screens compared to what's on the computer let's go over my shipping we all run our businesses our own way uh, whatever works for you i use global shipping program gsp for international shipping that means if i sold this lovely ebay mug and i sold it to somebody in i don't know france or something i would only have to ship it to kentucky packing it properly I would ship it to the eBay location in Kentucky, their distribution center, and then they would take it from there and get it to the person in France. You'll get an email or a message saying that they've got it in Kentucky. Then I think they say another message when it leaves Kentucky. And then you get another message when um, it reach your, reaches the destination. Now, as long as you pack it properly and there's no issues with packing that you didn't just throw it in a box, if it gets lost, broken, stolen, eBay will eat the cost of it and refund you. That's why I like global shipping. Sometimes it's more uh, for buyers to buy using global shipping, but I prefer it because it's just a lot easier to do international sales. No. Okay, 99% of the time now on this one, I did not pick uh, economy shipping because these go first class. These weigh at about four ounces first class. And I insure it so it comes out to about $5.45. But most of the time I have this set up as economy shipping, which can be a deterrent sometimes to buyers, but I've had pretty good luck with it. It'll basically say uh, five to nine days or seven to nine days you'll get your item. That can turn off people, but I get it out 99% of the time using priority. Now, when I'm using the economy shipping selection, I can use anything. I can use... Um, Post office, I can use FedEx, I can use post office priority box, I can use post office flat rate boxes, whatever. If I use, if I choose standard shipping, United States Postal first class, I have to, like for example, I'd have to ship it out first class, no other way to get total protection from eBay. Now, have there been those times when I've messed up and I've selected something and not economy shipping? Yes. And have I shipped it out under a different way? Yes. And I... <laughs> I was worried, but the person got it with no problem. Happened a few weeks ago with an item. I shipped FedEx, and it said I was shipping in a post office, but there was no issue. Uh, what else can I show you here? My return policy is always 30 days. I know, oh, 30 days. I, it flipped me out when I went from 14 to 30, but knock on wood, I don't get too many returns. I'm very, very descriptive in my title. So let's move on to the next item here. This is obviously a John Deere lawnmower dipstick. Now, it doesn't make big bucks on this. I probably made $9.99. Takes about maybe five minutes to take off the mower. You basically take the, the, the recoil off, four bolts. Then you take the gas tank off, which I think is no bolts or maybe one bolt. And then you take this off, which I think it unscrews. You put a big wrench up here. I'll oh, make this bigger. Yep. You put a wrench up there and it unscrews. You loosen it and you clean it the best you can. So I made about nine bucks on this from an item I got for nothing. And every time I sell a part, I try my best to put the model number of the uh, 
thing it came off of. There is the model. Oh, that is the engine that it came off of, the John Deere engine it came off of. So that's one, and these engines parts go for pretty good money. I've got three of them in my garage. I'm hoping to get through this winter. I've been saying that for about three, four years now. Hopefully this winter I will. I'm really trying to trim down my inventory too. Uh, this was an item a friend of mine gave me. She was moving away, and she goes, whatever's left in the house, just take and keep and sell and whatever. Uh, this went global shipping program. I think it went up to Canada. Um, some people pay a lot of money for Canadian via global shipping, but that's fine, whatever. They bought it. It was somebody with zero feedbacks. The only problem I noticed is the book is in good shape. The problem is very good when you say very good. I always go one below, like the condition when I'm selling books and stuff like that that have like very good, good, you know, whatever, average, whatever all the things. So I always go one below what it what it is. And I really should have said good. It was in good shape. Uh, I'm hoping it's in as very good shape as they think it's going to be in because I paid nothing for this book and I made some pretty decent money on it. It went out media mail down to Kentucky. Uh, I made about $31 on this. Somebody gave it to me twice for it's key. It is important. I tell everybody that sells on eBay, no matter what you're selling, tell everybody what you're doing. You don't have to be doing consignment. Just tell everybody what you're doing. Hey, I'm selling on eBay. Even if you're selling replenishables, if you're ordering them and then selling replenishables, which means you list the mouse once and I have a source for mice and I just keep on ordering mice as I run out is what a replenishable is basically. Or you could be thrifting or you could be parting out stuff, but just always tell people what you're doing because it's amazing the stuff I get. This person here, like I just said, moving out of a house moving away out of the area, said, you know what? I don't want the rest of this stuff. Just come and take it. Don't worry about it. I'm like, I'll be glad to sell it for you on your assignment. No, don't worry about it. Just, just take it. You've done enough for me. So that was wonderful. So always tell people what you're doing with your online ventures. Uh, here is a, I think this is a consignment item. This is a very old item. I think it was. I can't remember. <laughs> Whatever the person probably said, just keep it anyway. It's no big deal. Um, didn't make much on this. I would have thought this would have went for a lot more. A lot of this Indian style jewelry or whatever you want to call it, I've done very well with in the past. Belt buckles and stuff, the hand carved ones and hand whatever ones. Um, but again, even if I do it on a consignment, I made $13 or eleven ninety nine whatever off of it. So I'm happy with that. I was real specific. Uh, this was done on a, uh, the white background is actually a board from the dollar store, a project board. I set up one flat on the table and one of those other project boards, the trifold ones, and I use dollar store lamps. I would show you, but I'd have to take one down. I've done a video on those before, the desk lamps, LED lamps. I use one of those for lighting. Nothing fancy here. I'm very frugal, which is good and bad in many ways. Took a close up on one side, took a close up on the other side. The back, it looks like it's very un, very unbranded, which was bad. I could have probably gotten more if it was better four inch by three inch. So I'm very, I, I want to do the pictures as best I can. I stated the size. I found one on Google. I Googled this and I found it on Google and I pulled the description off of there. Um, I did my best with item specifics. So it's basically it for that one. So... I either made $24.99 or $12.99 or $11.99, whatever on that one. That's fine. Quick sale. Went first class. Put it in a little box. All right. Let me tell you about this. Great. I showed this one last week. It didn't go well. Um, thank goodness I had another one, but I'm, uh, I shipped the first one FedEx and it broke. I was upset. The end, the, the buyer was not real thrilled because they're doing a restoration project and they needed that. And I was really upset because it's a lot of money I lost here. Um, I'm got a, I got the claim halfway done to FedEx. I got to fax them some things. Yes, fax them some documents. Um, I'm hoping to get all the money back from FedEx. Uh, so she said, do I have another one? Yes, I have another one. And I put this thing in five layers of bubble wrap, large bubble wrap. It took me an hour to pack this. Now, it just got delivered today. 
I just saw it was delivered. I don't see a message from her yet. I hope to gosh this one did not get broken because if it did, I've lost a lot of money on these items. Um, you know, it's cost me thirty cost me thirty five dollars to ship. This one cost me twenty four dollars to ship. The other one, because I just wrapped it in big thick heavy cardboard, which I've done before a thousand times with these grates. I don't know if this is actually a real iron grate or if it's some kind of mold. Is what I'm thinking is some kind of mold. Because I have never seen these things break before, like the picture she showed me. It cracked in several places. Uh, this was cracked. Here, I'll show you. Uh, this was cracked. There was a crack there. There was a crack there. Obviously, they were throwing this around. So she wanted me to wrap it really well, which I did. And she wanted me to write fragile, breakable on the box. I told her I'm against doing that. But I figured, hey, it's on her. You start writing fragile and break. Well, I personally think it's a like a, a sign to say, hey, let's, uh, oops, let's throw this around all over the place, you know. So I will update you on this sale. I'm hoping I can get the money back from FedEx. Um, from the other one, I need to fax that stuff over today. I keep on forgetting. I've been busy with the weekend. So let's hope this... Uh, just went through. This is a consignment item two off a good friend of mine. I uh, saw so I'd like probably make $89 off of this. But like I said, I lost a lot of money with shipping and time and everything else. But stuff happens. Returns happens. Breakages happen. It's part of the business. Don't let a return ruin your whole day. Don't let it stall you. Just move on. I know it's hard. If this was four years ago, I would have been flipping out for a week. I would have been mad at the buyer. I would have been mad at eBay, I've been at FedEx. Stuff happens. Could I have packed it better? Probably. But I never had a problem like that with these grades before. So, all right, let's move on to the next one. <laughs> See, I'm upset. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, I got this for uh, $1.99 for the whole set of Toy Story figurines. The, I forget the names of them, the cowboy, the cowgirl. The little horse bullseye, um, the dinosaur, the pig for $1.99 at the thrift store at um, in Pennsylvania. We went to a couple weeks ago, last month, Martin and I went to his um, family reunion. Great, great goodwill up there. Gosh, like stuff was almost nothing up there. So $1.99 for the whole set. I sold this for $7.99 plus shipping. I'll take it. I probably made the... Uh, Seven fifty on this because I think it was real cheap to ship. It went first class. It was only a couple ounces. Put it in a box all by itself that I had laying around. I have a lot of used boxes. We have two more items to go. I also stated, I looked these up, and many of them have bendable legs. You'll see them there sitting on their back. They're sitting on, their, I mean, on their butt. They're dancing around. And this one does not have bendable legs. I said non-bendable legs. And I did all these pictures. This, uh, this again, was done on that. On those dollar store boards that I showed you. Um, here are the legs. I showed the legs in, the legs out, the feet. And I also took close-ups of all the numbers on the feet. Uh, that number there is referencing to the whole set. That, uh, what is it, R2454. But I put all that stuff in the... Oops, no I didn't. Oh yeah, I <laughs> I thought I put any other specifics. I did not. I put it in the title. There we go. So there you go. That was a quick sale. Actually, that sold in one day. Not for big bucks, but hey, you know what? Most of my sales are between $10 and $35. Yes, I have the gems like the great and the other ones all the time, but that is my bread and butter, $10 to $35, and that is fine. I will even sell stuff for cheaper than that as long as it's a quick ship. And I can find it. All right. Please, please, please don't discount VHS tapes. Don't walk past VH, VSH tapes. I made $24 off of this with Media Mail. This is a cult classic. I didn't even know it. Um, the same person that gave me the book, whatever the name of that book was, that Disney book, Pixar book, um, gave me this was in a box, and another tape was in a box, another horror classic, cult classic. There are many, 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 many things that have never made it to DVD. A lot of kitty stuff, uh, Barney, Bob the Builder, a lot of kitty stuff did not make it to DVD. Um, 
Kipper, stuff like that. You're not going to make tons of money on that stuff, but hey, it goes media mail. You're going to get the VHS tape for just about nothing. The thrift store near me at one time a couple years ago was selling it for 10 cents a piece. I did very well selling um, workout uh, VHS tapes, and I've sold specific ones like train rides through Egypt and tourist kind of stuff like that, uh, sets like that. You're not going to make a ton of money. The other problem you may have with these is they may not be in the greatest of all shape. This thing's, this thing's got to be 15, 20 years old at this point. So it may play once or twice and break. Hopefully that's okay. They're probably going to just transfer it over to, to another media, I would think. But uh, I've only had one problem with one of them breaking after being played a couple times, and I just refunded the money and moved on. Uh, let, one last item here. Just sold this last night. For the second time, because the first time I sold it, the person didn't look at the description or the uh, the part number and thought it would fit their washer, and it did not. And in my description, I have, well, up there, but also down here, I will scroll down here. And I also have, very clearly, not responsible for part not fitting. So um, there's all the specifics for what the model, I, I don't, do, do I have the model number of the washer in the end of this? I can't, yes, I do. Here's a perfect example. Here's all the numbers of the item. There you go. And there's the tag off the washer. So there's the washer model number. You can look that up if you were buying it to make sure it fits. And here is the part number for the item. Well, believe it or not, that is it. Oh my gosh, I feel like, this went really, really fast. Again, there's my YouTube channel. Please subscribe to it. Please like this video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you find this information helpful. And I'm also, I'm, I'm waiting for clearance to release the video. We videoed the whole thing on Saturday. I'm waiting for clearance from everybody if I can um, put on my YouTube channel or clips or whatever. I really would like to do that. I did do a seminar on parting out stuff and selling on eBay. I'm, that I can distribute because it's mine. I'm trying to, I'm waiting for a friend of mine that was there, did all the videoing to cut that out for me. And I'll post up my uh, YouTube channel. The event was really, really great. I will keep you guys informed of the next event. I also run the Raleigh eBay meetup group, second Thursday of the month. Uh, check that out on the meetup. Just type in Raleigh eBay and it is there. Please look down below. I've been in a ton of uh, different podcasts and different things like that for all that information. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You guys have a great day and happy eBay selling.